we're doing an interview series where we're interviewing our cast crew and bands but hopefully asking them some questions that they don't get asked all the time so with our wonderful voice acting cast we're going to find out about their musical past any favorite concert memories or favorite bands or albums and with our bands that we feature in the show we're going to figure out what their favorite animated movies are disney songs and things like that so we're all very very excited for this here at broken arrow today we are joined by our main sisters of battle of the bands erica mendez who plays jamie scott and Sarah Natacheni, who plays Brooke Scott. Uh, and in the show, just to give you a little abbreviation of these characters, Jamie is a quieter, nervous girl. She's piano trained, so she's definitely an orchestra kid. And she yearns to be a film composer, just like the 90s movies that she grew up loving with her older brother. Brooke, who is our blue haired guitar player, I'm sure you've seen pictures of her. She is loud, bombastic and competitive. She's the lead guitarist at Heat Seeker, which is the fictional band that we follow in the show. And she's given Joan Jett and Jimi Hendrix a run for their money. So without further ado, let's see how we're going and ask some like big bad music questions here. How are you guys doing today? Good, yeah. good chilling. Oh, cool. <laughs> Well, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. I just kind of like want to jump in and I wanted to start like kind of in like a time, like we'll go like on a timeline of like growing up, like, you know, what were some of the things that you were spinning? Were you guys into like any of like the boy band scenes or in like a, a you know, a certain band had your heart and passion on the cassette text? Like what was happening? Who should go first? Whoever wants to. Sarah, do you want to go first? <laughs> I can go first, sure. I took notes. I totally took notes on all this. You you forced me actually to go into my music collection. I have 500 starred songs and I don't use my Spotify that much. Wow. So if I used it like religiously, it would be way bigger. Um, I have a really insane uh, eclectic like mix of genres and just music and bands that I love. Um, in terms of like the volume of music and like the percentage of songs that I, I'm like, I don't need to skip ahead. The Beatles win for me. Nice. It's basic, but true. You can't argue. Um, but the bands that I love that like stayed with me into adulthood, the Velvet Underground, Nico, Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs, Portishead, the White Stripes, the Wallflowers, Tom Waits, Leonard Cohen are like the only two whose lyrics I really paid attention to. Um, Blur, Nirvana, I listened to, I haven't listened to in a long time because that's like a dark place in my life yeah <laughs> uh Fiona Apple Alanis Morissette Lead Belly the National I mean I it's such a long list Oscar Peterson and Dave Brubeck Dionne Warwick um and John Cale who was like the godfather of Nico and Velvet Underground um that guy in, in his own right is an absolute genius um yeah. I feel like a lot of people may, may not know that so um but yeah uh, a lot. <laughs> I'm a lot. And I listen to a lot of classical music. My parents are classical and Broadway musicians. So I love musicals. Gypsy's probably my favorite musical. Um, classical uh, composers, Rachmaninoff, Mahler, Dvorak, Liszt, Schumann, Greek, Debussy, Kachaturian. I like a lot of opera. I like Prokofiev's Romeo and Juliet over Tchaikovsky's Come Fight Me. Heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> I love the transgression of Orchestra. Yeah. You just said you said opera and Nirvana in the same uh, yeah. sentences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And rap, I like a lot of rap too, and Wu Tang and ODB, of course, and Most Def and Nas, and I like like really timid kind of folksy music, like Chili Gonzalez and Roger Miller and Hooray for the Riff Raff and Moldy Peaches and all kinds of uh, vocal groups from the early mid twentieth century. <laughs> Like Patience and Prudence and the Andrews sisters and mm. uh, Patty Page and the Mills brothers, all the brothers and the sisters. I'm into brothers and sisters. I love them. <laughs> That's um, and then soundtrack, film soundtracks. Yeah. That's my last category. Uh, if you want, uh, Johnny Greenwood. If you listen to, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Phantom Thread, the soundtrack of that. There's one track, House of Woodcock, could literally dissolve a blood clot. It's a medical fact. If they don't have that in their like review of that <laughs> soundtrack, someone needs to go amend that right away. Yeah, oh my God. yeah for sure. I, I had a feeling at some point, because I did want to make it clear too, because I, uh, you know, anybody watching or listening, I preemptively gave out some questions, but like, of course, like film soundtracks, anime openers, Broadway songs, all on the table here. This wasn't just like, yeah. what's, what's your favorite, you know, Foo Fighters album? Like, please tell me, but also like, I 
I am a huge movie score film lover as well. So yeah, great. Yeah, Erica, I'm let's hear it. Let's hear. Where's your your notes? <laughs> I, I, oh, I feel like an underachiever because I was like, I'm just gonna fly by the seat of my pants and see what happens. Um, I uh, definitely, I'm the type of person who I don't. I'll listen to like spacklings of music like here and there, but um, kind of once I find like what I really like, I just listen to it over and over and over and over again until I get sick of it. So um, when I was a teen, I was I was big into the like boy band, girl band, whatever thing. So like, you know, Backstreet Boys and Sync, Spice Girls, what have you. Um, then I grew out of that. I don't care about this stuff anymore. But you don't have at the time. Grow, you don't have to grow out of that. <laughs> just I, No, I mean, you know, I... I don't know. I just, I guess I just evolved from there. Like I'd still probably listen to it like at karaoke and stuff. I'll still like throw out a Britney Spears or whatever the heck um, song. But um, now it's just kind of like, um, I think what I keep going back to, um, actually, I just listened to them not too long ago uh, in the car. Um, Incubus, uh, one of my yeah, and Red Hot Chili Peppers. So like a lot of those too. So listen to a lot of those, um, their albums and stuff um, over the years. But uh, lately it's been more of like, um, cause I don't really, I'm not in the car too, too often. I actually take public transit and I don't tend, I don't know why I don't tend to listen to music when I'm going by, I guess I'm just too like zoned out or whatever. But um, I, uh, when I do listen to music, it's usually like video game soundtracks. I'm really into that stuff. Um, and I did have a phase of anime openings where I would listen to those all the time. Cause as a teen, I was really big into anime. Um, but yeah, more often than not, it's like video game music, typically like Final Fantasy stuff. And okay, yeah. I was gonna say, well, what are some of the like all time like just you could turn it on and get oh, lost and get. I mean, the game? right now I'm playing a lot of Final Fantasy fourteen, um, and uh, so can uh, the composer for that is like an absolute genius. Um, I think he learned some stuff from Nobuo Uematsu, mm. who's like you know the grandfather of. Final Fantasy music and he's incredible his stuff's incredible um stuff by uh I'm like blanking on names right now but uh like uh sorry there's noise coming out of my my door there um like Yoko Shimomura who does like Kingdom Hearts and um stuff like the music in Kingdom Hearts is like very good good. and not (laughs) always talked about all the time because the Zelda guy is the first the Koji Kondo is the first Mm -hmm. person that comes to mind for yeah yeah Zelda Mm -hmm. stuff is also really good and Tales I mean we've talked about Tales before like Tales of music is so good um but yeah stuff like that I mean I'm I'm pretty simple I don't necessarily need lyrics to like get into a, a musical zone and I know that's like the same for a lot of people like I'll, I'll listen to um orchestra stuff uh, orchestral stuff now every now and then and like um I've been really into musicals the past like five years or so so I've been trying to culture myself more and see more varied ones um after getting into like Hamilton like I, I mean I was into it before Hamilton but um I was like I think that's what kind of was like I need to watch more stuff I think to kind of you know make my uh, opinion of it broader if I'm gonna like this stuff I feel like I don't know why I thought yeah. that but, but it, I've been finding like some really good stuff so it's all good wow, I love how every, everybody here is like very all over the place which is how it should be you know like and, and it's fun to see like I'm sure both of you see it like you know like you can you can be totally deep in one genre and then flip over the other and you're like that person must also listen to that because they're like referencing things or like you know like I mean samples are the easiest way to find it but it's fun seeing like metal people like do bluesy stuff and you're like oh they definitely must have had like a time you know spinning older blues records or things like that so the crossovers are just always so fun and on that note I know Sarah mentioned that uh uh, the family comes from a musical background do either of you guys uh ever had had played an instrument or do you still currently do or or if you don't is there an instrument that'd be like you know you had all the time in the world no obligations and somehow you could like learn it fast like what would it be Ooh. Um, so I, I grew up playing piano, but I hated it and I had no discipline for it. And also it's a really hard career. So they were like, just go be an actor. <laughs> <laughs> that was the transition. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it was, I, I was a rhythmic gymnast after I was a failed pianist. I failed like by five, I was like done playing piano, but I like, I've maintained it. I still have a keyboard and I still play just for fun, but like in the shower, I'm not playing for anybody. Um, I would play cello if I could. That'd be great. Yeah, love cello. Cello's so cool. Yeah, I, cool. Uh, I used to play trumpet 
in elementary school. That's super got, cool. <laughs> yeah, it just kind of got too difficult after a while. Well, see, my thing was though, like all the girls in elementary school, they're all like, I want to play the flute. I want to play the clarinet. And I'm like, that's dumb. I don't want to do that. I'm going to do something more ambiguous that like, I know there aren't going to be many girls doing. So I picked the trumpet, which isn't the hardest compared to like all the instruments I think you could have picked uh, in elementary school band, but it definitely got a little too difficult for me at a point. Cause you have to like position your mouth to make certain sounds. Yes, it's all on um, three sure. keys. Yeah. <laughs> three keys. So I think I, it's got too hard for me and I was like, okay, I'm done. Um, and then the spit valve thing was just, I, I played out, French horn know. for a while so yeah. I so you know <laughs> spit valves but um I uh played guitar for a little bit I just wasn't very good at it because my hands are kind of small and I could never grow calluses um yeah. so I just I, I still like it like every once in a while I'll, like fiddle with one but I don't remember much from mm -hmm. what I learned um but if I could if I had all the time in the world to like learn anything it'd probably be um I do have a keyboard which I've been meaning to like learn how to play but I haven't because I'm lazy um but if not that then violin for sure like I really love the sound of violin like stuff like um what is her name I'm blanking on her Lindsay oh uh Stir Sterling I'm probably Sterling. saying that yeah. wrong Lindsay yeah. Sterling. like her stuff yeah, yeah. is like incredible so. you guys are like halfway to a quartet and then Erica on her own is halfway to a ska band so <laughs> If, if voice acting is something that you, you want to put on hold and start a ska <laughs> band, I think 2020, 2021 is the time to do it. Ska didn't die. Mm. <laughs> All time high. <laughs> yeah. I, wow. I love that you, you had like literally, cause I'm also a band person. You had the exact same mentality that I had going in it was like, everybody's playing the flute and whatnot. And then I decided to do saxophone, but trumpet's cooler. Cause like there were like, because the clarinet is the easy, like the easiest transition into sax. So you do have like, I guess in like the sixth grade band, a little bit more girls playing saxophone. But like, I do not think I've like in school, like middle elementary school saw a girl trumpet player. So that's really badass. Yeah, I think it was like maybe one of two. It was either girls would usually pick, like I said, flute, clarinet and saxophone, I think was like the third most popular one for them. That's so. I get Erica a trumpet. I want Erica to, to now just be a professional trumpeter. It'd be a disaster at this point. Let's start a sixth grade band. <laughs> now. Speaking of musicals, we'll just do the music band. We'll just, you know, <laughs> send instruments out to kids and just yep. rally them up. Perfect. What could go wrong? Amazing. Well, now that we're talking about firsts and, you know, like things that we we're doing uh growing up uh first concert do you remember what that was or was there one that like really stood out to you that your parents sarah sarah's got one in mind <laughs> oh my <laughs> god so my first concerts were classical because of my parents but mm -hmm. my first like i bought these tickets and yeah. went on my own papa roach <laughs> oh my god what a throwback <laughs> was that was that like okay. after an orchestra like like you had gone to a few orchestra ones and then you were like this. <laughs> this is what I want. Yes. I was like maybe 16 or something. So this was like, I was already out by myself. I could go out to things on my own. And I was like, this is the one show that I'm like, I'm going to go see. And I went with the guy and a couple of our friends, not a boyfriend, but like he tried to become my boyfriend, I think at that concert. And I said, no. <laughs> and you rejected someone at a Papa Roach concert. Oh my God. <laughs> the best story I've ever heard. <laughs> Yeah, it was a good time. It was fun. There was mosh pitting. Seems seems fair. Was that was that also in the in the city? Did you, did you see it in yeah. the East Coast? Oh, that's yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. It was like it was not a huge venue. It was like it was intimate and like definitely like a, it's all standing room, which I hate. Let me sit. Let me sit. Are you kidding me? Like we should just be sit at the pop concert. I want to, I want to sit down and listen to the man. What's the problem? It's not, this isn't like a you know it's not a tango. I want to sit down. It's very rude. This was me at 16 and I have not changed. Yeah, I'm so excited that when the when there, the single that comes to mind, the like cut my life into pieces, you're just like, I want to sit down for this. I need yeah, to I want to sit. sit. <laughs> I haven't been to a show like that since then. Oh, oh no. It's I don't like standing. <laughs> I paid for this. Give me yeah. a chance. Yeah. Those those dive bars are, are hard after a while. <laughs> hard, yeah. Oh my God. yeah. 
All right, Erica, do you have a first concert memory or I something fun? I have this recollection I of like me going to a Dixie Chicks concert. I think that was my first concert. I don't know why I was there. Um, I just remember <laughs> that I saw them. I think it was like some kind of festival thing that I was mm. taken to by like one of my family members and they just happened to be playing there. So I was like watching for a little bit, but I didn't really know their music. So I was kind of like, okay, this is cool, I guess. But I think the first um, I actually like wanted to go to was um, an Incubus concert. So I've seen them like twice um, in my life, which is really cool. If somebody, if somebody had told me this morning, like you're going to be talking about Papa Roach and Incubus and the Dixie Chicks, I would never have believed you. <laughs> I'm like, all right. <laughs> wow. That's the Incubus. There was a guy that I just worked with who was like super, he's, if he watches this, he's going to be very embarrassed, but he was like super into Incubus. Like, like we all followed each other on Spotify. You know, you can like see what people are listening to on Spotify and it's very invasive of your privacy because people are like, how soon you've been listening to the Sonic Adventure 2 battle soundtrack, like for five days in a row. Are you okay? He would always, <laughs> it would always just say Incubus and we're like, He's fine. He's good. Okay. He's just got a vibe. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> Wish you were here on oh, repeat. Oh, yeah, oh, so oh, good. Yeah. So good. What is though? Uh, now I'm gonna flip flop. Even though I said we were gonna do a timeline, what is the the band? If, if all of them were touring, you could pick from anybody. What is like the first show back from uh, you know not having shows for a while because of what's been going on? What would be like the number one? Like oh, I'd love to go you'd love to stand you'd make the exception to stand at the show what would it be no 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 one could do that <laughs> <laughs> elton john i wanted to see elton john he was about to play shows in new york and i was actually like trying to get tickets on the cheap not succeeding um and then the shutdown and i could not see elton john and i just i've been listening to elton john since this whole pandemic he's like the pandemic monster for me he's my music <laughs> Is he, did monster. he reschedule or is he? I don't know. I haven't checked yet. My fingers are crossed. Oh I my God. So. That'd be, that'd be like a legendary concert. Legend. Oh I mean, so fun. Yeah. So fun. So, yeah. I wanted so bad to go to the Spice Girls reunion tour. <laughs> I think they were only doing it in the UK though. So I yeah. was like so tempted to just be like, you know what? why not? I didn't get to see them when they were in their prime because I was too young. And there's no, my, my parents are going to take me to that. Um, but uh, a, a, a musician I forgot to mention that I used to listen to a lot when I was younger was uh, Selena. But of course, you know, she's no longer with us. She hasn't been with us in a very long time, but I would have like killed, honestly, to be um, at one of her concerts. So, yeah. Um, but I actually, I do have a, a concert that I'm, uh, Final Fantasy, the Final Fantasy VII Orchestra Tour. Oh, yeah. For the remake. I have tickets for it and they keep rescheduling it. So mm -hmm. that's oh. probably the first thing I'm going to see yeah. by the time this is all over. But yeah. Oh, that's so fun. That's so cool. Oh, the Spice Girls, actually, I went, I, I went to see them on their last tour. Oh. And you said in their prime, they are still in their prime. The show was amazing. Oh, it's literally one of my favorite concerts. I actually really liked, they came out with a few CDs um, like way after the fact, after they had kind of like broken up or like uh, yeah. Victoria Beckham had kind of like went her, no, it wasn't, it wasn't Victoria. Jerry, it was, Jerry uh, left. Jerry, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they're still, it was still like really good. Like I really, really liked good. that album that they made after the fact, so. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> it's very fun. Well, on that, like thinking of, of, of hopefully, you know, future times and there's so many people, you know, our, our newer artists, you know, like, putting out EPs right now and, and singles. And it's been really awesome. I mean, you guys have been recording at home or, you know, uh, adventuring safely uh, to wherever you need to be for work. And it's been really cool seeing the music community kind of come together for, you know, SoundCloud and, you know, releasing tracks on Spotify. Is there, is there a newer band that you've been spinning uh, that you, you want people to know more about or that you've been, you know, like really digging on or, you know, any new, newer games or movie soundtracks that you're just like, if you have not listened to them, Ah. Mm. wonderfully worked question i know it's i guess really no good. that's okay <laughs> there are two movie soundtracks call me by your name and phantom thread those are like the two best movie soundtracks i think in a long time and up but up is a little bit older but it's also really good um new bands i don't know what's new and what's not there's, I mean, there's anything that you, yeah. you just yeah. want more people to know about yeah the avalanches 
I don't know if they got more power, more powerful, more powerful, <laughs> more powerful. over the years. But when I first, you know them? No, I was just saying, I was just saying like being powerful and being more popular, I think are kind of the same. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. The avalanches are amazing. And I've, I've known of them for years and I feel like nobody's ever talked. I like one person was like, said something about the avalanche. I'm like, oh my God, you know them. <laughs> I feel like nobody ever talks about them. They're really, really good. I'm going to really have to good. check them out. Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. What, really what eclectic. Kind of, like, eclectic or? It's eclectic for sure. It's, um, it's a combination of genres they borrow from a lot it's there's a lot of electronic elements to it but it's it's very melodic and it's a great avalanches man i'm so stoked to check that out great yeah uh for me i actually finally listened to her album i think it got released a few years back but um what is her name grace vanderwall um, I think she won, oh, she really? won like when she was way younger, I think like years ago. Um, I mean, she's still pretty young. I think she's like barely 20 if that. Um, Grace Vanderwall was on like the X Factor or something like that, or America's Got Talent. And that's she why that's won. So now she's like actually yeah. making music and her voice is like really cool. It's like, I know there's probably been other artists with a similar type of voice, but it's like that like raspy kind of like, she sounds like amazing against a ukulele. Um, but I think a lot of her music is a little bit more poppy. I don't know if that's like actually her style or if like that's the label kind of pushing that on her. Um, but actually um, she was in the movie that got released during the pandemic, uh, the live action adaptation of uh, Stargirl, if anybody remembers that book. Cool. I hated the book. And I was like, I don't really want to watch this movie, but I found out she was starring in it. And I was like, oh man, but I really like, I don't know, I want to know more about her. So I watched it I think it was okay um it wasn't the best (laughs) weird disney movie but um yeah so i i kind of like listened to her album and there's actually a few pretty decent songs on there so that's wow i don't know either that i'm super excited to check that out especially because they sound a a little different on the the spectrum there probably a very different spectrum (laughs) we Um, ask you is there a band that i know this is like directed at us but who who, who would you tell us I think I would say not to just sell out on our show here, but our our boys, uh, the Hawkins, uh, we use uh, their track "Rumor" uh, for our first episode, which is very exciting. But they're they for me were a Spotify discovery. I uh, as much as you know, good and bads of all music streaming things. Uh, I do really enjoy Spotify, kind of looking at what you're looking at and throwing you new tracks. And yeah, a couple years ago they they showed up and I was like, this is great. And then I cold emailed them. Uh, and then I was like, do you want to do animation stuff? And now we're like, we play video games all the time. We yeah. had a phone call because uh, they're out in, I think it's, I'm going to say it wrong. And they're going to laugh. Uh, Arbolga, Sweden. Uh, so they're uh, outside of, I want to say Stockholm, but like four people that I never thought my life would interact with. And they are so talented and so great. And they've never played the U S but hopefully after everything's over we can get them over here because they're they're definitely in the, the rock vein uh but i think way more people should know about them and then we'll we'll fight to keep them in our battle of the band sphere but they definitely deserve a lot more attention so, so cool yeah they're really cool dudes <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Well, I now I kind of want to go back to concerts because I was so thrilled with the, the Papa Roach and Dixie Chicks throwback. Is there a, is there a favorite concert? So out of out of any of them, is there one that you like had had a fun memory of going with somebody, or it was like the most crazy time, or it was you know just like a really well done show? Any any cool concert that comes to mind? Yeah. Um, my mom is a violinist and she toured with Barbara Streisand. So I've seen Barbara Streisand perform like s- several times. And I actually worked on her show at the Barclays Center, uh, not through my mom, was not a case of nepotism. I was like a media manager. So I would like run all of the drives from all of the, the cards from the cameras from like nine cameras to, to the backstage area and like have oh, them replenish <laughs> and like deal with all the media and make sure nothing got deleted and everything got copied properly. Anyway, uh, she is spectacular. She's the queen of yeah. never seen Beyonce. So I might say that about Beyonce too, um, or Lady Gaga. I've never seen either of them, but Barbara's a, you know. Yeah. 
that's an icon. Oh my God. Icon. Yeah. That's beautiful. And the Spice Girls. And, and the Spice Girls. I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Something to look forward to. I'm excited for you. Well, we'll hope. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. Um, for me, so before I did voiceover, I think I kind of mentioned that I was like into anime. Um, so I would go to anime conventions and my hometown convention was Anime Central in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And one year they had this band, um, was it, was it Duo's Infinity? I think it was Duo's Infinity. Oh my God. I don't even remember. This is a bad story. Um, it was, I, no, it was High and Mighty Color. High and Mighty Color is who it was. Who it was. And I like loved a lot of their openings. Um, didn't really know too many of their songs because I'm. It was kind of hard to get their music without doing it like in illegal ways, which I tried not to do as much as possible. But um, uh, so I went to their concert. Like had a great time. Uh, I went by myself because I didn't really know too many people that like actually liked listening to them. Um, and I normally would not have done something like that by myself, but I just decided to do it. I kind of hung in the back and whatever. Um, they, uh, at the end of the show threw like drumsticks out and stuff and like picks. And I did something I never thought I would have done. I like reached up and like, actually, I didn't even grab it. Somebody else grabbed it. And I still reached up anyway and managed getting it somehow. Yeah. Like, injuring anybody. And the people just gave up and like walked away. And I was like, okay. So I got the drumstick. I still have it somewhere. Um, so cool. and I took it to their autograph signing and got them to sign this like tiny drumstick. Um, <laughs> and they saw it and they were like, Oh my gosh, like, this is so cool. So, uh, that you caught it and you're bringing it to, to get autographed. But, um, yeah, I still, still have it to this day somewhere in my messy house. That's so, so fun. It, I will say like, like conventions when, when they do get music stuff, because it is like a lot of those kind of bands don't do, you know, like they're not like the Bands, most of the time like not the band in the tour van driving you know all down the west mm-hmm. coast and you know, all that kind of stuff so my god there's one year I, I was walking around sorry now I'm gonna tell Tana story I'm so sorry um but like I was walking around San Diego comic-con and all of a sudden the pillows were there and I loved Fully Cooly growing up and I was like that's a band that like I like I love this soundtrack more than anything else in the world I, will, I just categorized it as like, I will never see the pillows. They are somewhere in Japan. They're musical geniuses and I will never see them. And then I was just walking around and all of a sudden I was like, that sounds like a live version of that Fooly Cooly song. And then they were just there. And I was like, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, conventions are, are really cool for the musical aspect. Cause like you said, like, I mean, how often are you going to get a chance? Yeah. Like you can't like actively go to Japan. Like how often are you going to get a chance to see some of these um, these bands because a lot of them I mean I think over the past few years some of them have been kind of been coming through mm-hmm. um like that's probably few, why yeah I forget there was a few bands that came and actually did like world tours but um not very many of them do so usually you have to catch them at a convention I'm still hoping for baby metal I do not know much about baby metal except that they are I think the they're most one of the badass done tours yeah I mean they, they're like big enough and and they always take the like the cutest pictures with like the metal gods and then they're just like also two metal gods and I'm just like wow this mashup of styles that is happening here is incredible we gotta get we gotta get baby metal on the show Jaren take note of that <laughs> it'll be great yeah, and, and I guess like next up here is like, I, I know we were talking before this about getting around and, you know, here in LA, uh, I'm out in LA, uh, you know, like driving in your car, you know, what CDs are you putting in and stuff like that. But yeah, just like, are you guys like, are you your music in the car people? Uh, you know, like, what is your go to? Like, you know, if you were on a road trip or you guys like podcast people, I know I didn't super specify that, but I know that's a big thing that, you know, people divide their time between. Is there anything that, yeah, if you're, out for the long haul what are you kind of like plugging into oh you sound you're muted oh i think you muted. whoops hi I, it's <laughs> noisy out here um i haven't driven since my test which i took pretty uh recently recently like three years ago um so if i i imagine like when thinking about this i was like what would i put on if i drove to, from new york to la like i would love to start with like simon and garfunkel and all the new york 
like the real New York people and like progress through and like listen to everything else. Um, just as I'm, you know, all the way to the Beach Boys and the Shirelles and like um, Fairport Convention and people like that, that's where I would end up. But when I fly, I have a very specific Ooh. situation because I don't fly well. Um, Metronomy is on my playlist, Department of Eagles, Bob Dylan, Ooh. Pete Seeger, Aphex Twin, The Avalanches, Animal Collective. Um, Beach House, Thievery Corporation, Wax Taylor, Stars, Chinese Man, and Harry Nilsson. That's like my playlist. So some Beach House is great. <laughs> Love Beach House. Love it. Yeah. Can't travel without it. I have like, head, um, you know, uh, noise canceling headphones and wine. <laughs> <laughs> Beach House and wine. Yes. Yeah. And a camera. I keep myself really um, uh, distracted by taking pictures out the window. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> the only way I can do it. I love yeah. this. Oh it's so bad. Yeah. Yeah. I just try to sleep so I don't have to deal with it. I can't it's sleep hard, on though. a plane. I also can't sleep on a plane. It's very difficult. Yeah. If I'm really tired, like usually I have such bad anxiety that I can't sleep the night right. of or before. So I'll like be so exhausted that I can't uh... sleep or I'm going to like die. Um, <laughs> yeah I've, tr I've tried that I've tried like booking a flight like at 7 a.m and not sleeping until the flight uh, I stay up the whole time and then I'm like <laughs> yeah <I'm here." laughs> that's bad yeah. what are you what are you plugging into Erica on, uh, for me on I trips? also don't drive um when I do feel like I owe myself control of the radio when my boyfriend is driving if I happen to be in the car with him I'll usually put on some kind of like um video game soundtrack or whatever I'm, I'm listening to at the moment which again is just mostly Final Fantasy 14 at this point because it's like such a long game that there's so many tracks um and it's just I don't know my happy music at the moment even though some of it's very sad and makes me cry I, say, but, I would um, assume it probably makes it more of like an adventure right because you know. in a way yeah depending on what you're listening to from the track but uh when I I usually hear like a lot of stuff that I'm not used to because of his musical taste he's got a little bit different of a taste than I do so lately he's been listening to a band called Fleet Foxes oh yeah I've never heard of but he really oh they're so good mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So I'm still getting used to it, but uh, stuff like that. But he got me into like Andrew Bird, who I really like. Um, and what else? he listens to a lot of Bjork, um, oh, stuff yeah. like that. So yeah. they're all good. They're super cool. I will say though, you're missing out on the LA experience where the radio will play. I think they're probably legally obligated to because it's this often. They play a Red Hot Chili Peppers song once every three songs I, so. honestly when i go back home and uh am in the car with my family they'll usually listen to the radio and that's still like the case yeah so, wow it's I, it like must be a law <laughs> like it has <laughs> to be i believe it yeah which is good because flea is amazing good lovely Awesome. Well, I only have a few more here, and I, I know I know you guys have listed so many artists and so many bands, uh, but a thing, you know, and I, it's always, trust me, I always hate it when people are like, what's your favorite artist of all time? And you're like, uh, uh, if I say the wrong thing, I'm attached to this for life. Uh, but I know album, albums are so special because, you know, they do, they do take you on a journey of, you know, like, the songwriters or the artists kind of thing. So, you know, not favorite of all time because that is way too hard to do, but are are there, you know, as we wrap up here, are there, is there an album that like really speaks to you or, you know, like, you know, is, is like, is maybe the, the hard time but gets me through an album or the like, I want to, like, this is what I'm putting on when my friends are over and we're having a good time. Like, is there, is there some albums that just really, you know, connect with you? God, I've always been such a playlist person. I, my first device was an iRiver, like before the iPod. Wow. <laughs> oh, I was very, I was like, I need to do this. And I would, I would actually record, I would, I would take cassette tapes and record songs off the radio as I heard them and be like, oh my God, I have to, that's the song that I want next to my playlist. Like crazy person. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I remember listening to that Spice Girls album, Viva Forever was on it. I think it was the first one. I listened to that a lot <laughs> as an album and then just Broadway soundtracks. That's most of what I listened to. And the white album is my probably, probably my favorite, probably still my favorite Beatles album. I haven't yeah. investigated recently, but I'm confident in that. <laughs> <laughs> great. Oh my God. Great picks. 
I actually used to do the same thing you did with cassettes, but with yeah. um, music videos. Yeah, me so too. I would just watch like VH1 or MTV, and like mm -hmm. whenever a you know music video that I like from a band I like um, came on, I'd be like, oh god, oh god. So you'd see like all these like really bad cuts of things as I'm like trying to catch up with them to make sure I get all of it. Yeah. Um, but uh, gosh, albums. Uh, I definitely listen to a lot of Morning View, um, Incubus, uh, and blanking on what some of the albums are I just listened to I think it's is it Californication is that the album name as well oh mm -hmm. oh my god I actually think I know the answer to it I think it's Stadium Arcadium yeah Stadium yeah yeah because yeah. oh. I know that's also a song on it um, mm -hmm. yeah for sure I knew it was one of the song names it's the one with Danny California and yeah like all the mm -hmm. kind of bigger singles. Yeah, yeah 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 I really like that one um yeah I think that and I, I don't know I have such a hard like time remembering because I I too yeah. kind of am like I didn't really buy a lot of albums but I would like make playlists and stuff so yeah. just so um because for me it's like music is more of like if it's good it's good like I don't care what type of genre it is and I'm not mm -hmm. always in the mood to like necessarily listen to the same type of music over and over again so I'd have a lot of like varying um songs that I like that I just play over and over again yeah, same. Jagged Little Pill just came to mind. Mm. That I listen to all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, now I have one bonus question because everybody here has mentioned Broadway and I know uh, Sarah mentioned Gypsy. Just get out of the way here. What What are the shows that you think just, you know, button to button have some really good, good tracks? Because I'm, I'm a huge fan when the last not the last time I went, uh, but one of the first times, the opposite of that, uh, first times I went to New York, my mother and I saw hair. Um, and that wow. was an experience and got me way into 70s psychedelic rock. Probably not what she wanted, but <laughs> that was my takeaway. Yeah. Uh, and all of that kind of stuff. So are there any any fun shows or like really moving shows? All right, Sarah. I got you. I got you. Get us, get us going here. I got you. <laughs> Chicago. Yeah. I love Chicago. Um uh the, 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 the Dream Girls. Bye bye Birdie. Um I haven't seen that show. I, bye bye Birdie? I've, I've only heard like the main, the like the, the song where they're all on the phone. That's from mm -hmm. Bye Bye Birdie, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's it's right. awesome. Don't know what I'm talking about. It's so good. And the sound of music and West Side Story. Mm -hmm uh spam a lot was really good musically gypsy um beauty and the beast was great and and my mom played for 10 years there was a show at madison square garden called a christmas carol and every year they had a different screw she was like a star all these all, um, you gotta look it up just like an inc and it was an incredible production such a good and it only played in the winter like a long it was it competed with radio city i guess mm. and the music in that every single track is absolute genius. So a is she show. on? Is she on the recording of it, or was she? Yeah, she's got to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I think there's got to be a record. I hope there's a recording. Yeah. I know that there's there's a there is a video recording that we have. I don't know if it was ever like disseminated publicly. Mm -hmm. You can get it at like the library, but it's so good. If you can find it, it's worth finding. It's worth finding in video form. Seeing oh, this production, yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah, Christmas you said Carol, Christmas Carol, right? Yeah, from Madison Square Garden. Ran for 10 years. So good. <laughs> so I, random. I, I made a face when you said Chicago because I don't actually know what it's about because I haven't seen it, but I always think it's like really weird that I haven't seen it yet because I'm from Chicago. Um, Probably why. <laughs> but I, mean, I guess, I don't know. Yeah. I'm sure it has not really that much to do with it, but um, the, the actual living there. But uh, I, I do want to see it at some point. But uh, as far as stuff that I have seen that I really like, um, one of the first musicals I think I ever saw because my mom was like obsessed with Donny Osmond was Joseph and the Amazing De Technical or Dreamcoat. Hell so, yeah. <laughs> like, weird guilty pleasure for me. Like I listened to that so much when I was younger. Um, and I was actually in, uh, I'm very like introverted and shy, but I like made myself actually audition for it in high school. And I was in like the children's chorus or whatever, which is you're on stage the entire time, but you're with like a million other people. So it's not that big of a deal, but um, 
it, uh, so that one like meant a lot to me as a kid, um, because of that. And of course, like, you know, Hamilton really into the songs from Hamilton, um, rent, um, oh, Rent's good too. really good one. Okay. Um, Being- you like that one? <laughs> <laughs> That's I I totally yeah I could see why people would. You guys, you guys picked the opposite ones. Sarah really likes Chicago. Yeah. Erica hasn't seen it. Erica really likes Red. Yeah. New York. So interesting. I'm like still like see my thing is like a lot of my answers for musicals are are typically pretty basic because I haven't seen like a lot of the like more obscure ones. So, Mm -hmm. um, like I mean I named Hamilton Mm -hmm. and and Rent and um, Wicked. Um, I've seen Mm -hmm. Wicked a few times and I like that one. Um, I actually saw the Frozen musical and that was pretty good. Oh, I didn't even know that was like the production, like the stage production is like incredible. Um, but I also really like the Disney movies, so that's why I went and saw it. Anastasia was really good. Um I didn't know they had a production that either. Yeah. (laughs) I don't think I knew that either. That's good. Well, they were they did um at the Pantages in LA, they do like their packets and stuff like that. So they'll they had Anastasia and Frozen in the same one. Actually, it was this year. Or not this year, but last year of the year yeah. before that season that kind of got like halfway canceled. So I was yeah. actually supposed to see like the SpongeBob musical too, which I hear is pretty good. I have seen that was my last it. my last trip to New York because my mom and I see a musical every time we go. Uh, my mom's a flight attendant, so I feel very very uh, thankful to go to New York because that wasn't like something that we were just like let's just go. I'm from Seattle, like let's just go to New York all the time. Uh, so I'd like piggyback on her trips. Uh, but yeah, recently we saw SpongeBob, and because I'm an adult uh, and we had skipped a lot of years before doing it again, uh, we both had like full glasses of wine at the spongebob musical and it was fucking fantastic <laughs> amazing yeah. the costumes are really cute pretty upset that i didn't get to see that one because i heard it was good but you will you will day <laughs> spice girls and spongebob the musical there it goes. we <laughs> got you, you, you the line over. <laughs> uh cabaret i didn't say cabaret it's really important i just had to get that out yeah because it must be known it could <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Have, have either of you, because you mentioned Hamilton, have either of you seen that one or yeah. is it just the Disney? Oh, yeah. oh you've like seen it done? I've seen Hamilton. I have, I have seen Hamilton. Okay. <laughs> and I can tell you, it is fucking amazing. I actually, it's such a feat. I um, was so desperate to see it at a point that I actually bought like resale tickets and I like instantly regretted it because I spent way too much money on two tickets for me and my boyfriend to see it uh, for my birthday. Um, I went back to Chicago to do it and I was like oh man I spent like way too much money like I hope it's really good like I don't know and then I found out like a few weeks later that it was actually the the week or the month or a few weeks or whatever that Wayne Brady was playing Burr and he was incredible so I totally did not regret it after that I loved whose line is it anyway so same um, oh my god that's super cool yeah Yeah, it's brilliant gosh well musical love is great i i'm trying to like we the show that i'm currently working on is is all about musicals uh for my day job it's all about musicals and and i definitely want to find a way to incorporate uh i think our broadway elemental power is uh teleportation uh just because i thought it was fun of like you know there's so many roles that people are playing like oh it'd be cool if broadway musicians could like you know like marvel style like teleport places yeah. but we'll have to find a way to to get that in there and you know mix it up from the rock and roll and all that you know hip-hop stuff and whatnot but yeah it's it's so cool that you guys like have have such such a range of, of taste which i had a feeling you guys seem like really cool people uh it's uh you know fun to see uh your musical journey in that sense and i'm so happy that you guys could could take a little bit of your your busy weekend and time to talk but I just want to throw the floor over because I feel like this happens at the end of every interview so I'm trying to keep it keep it the same uh is there anything going on that you want to plug or talk about or anything uh fun you know what's the weather like I don't know (laughs) final thoughts words concerns Um, uh, this isn't going out to like a wide audience. I shouldn't be like, oh, well, this is my social, follow me on social media. <laughs> follow me on social media. It's where I put all my updates. Um, uh, you know, there's more Pokemon coming out and, uh, um, I'm dropping NFTs soon. I'm actually collaborating with a lot of animators on this one concept that my mom and I came up with. And, um, I, they're all like doing their takes on it. So I'll be dropping some NFTs soon. And I'm collaborating with my photography and voice acting, obviously. And yeah, I'm really into the NFT thing right now. It's kind of my focus. 
That's cool. Lots of fun yeah. stuff. Yeah, I just booked two series actually. So, but that's not going to come out anytime soon. So, can <laughs> you <laughs> hit me up in a year? <laughs> they do. <laughs> Amazing. Awesome. Erica, anything on your end? Um, I mean, you know, working here and there. Um, stuff. I can't talk about her stuff that's just been out for a while. Like, what was it? Yashahime just finished. Uh, the dub started airing, uh, stopped airing for that, like the other week or something like that. Uh, but the, I mean, we talked about it a little earlier, I'll assume, but uh, Pokemon Snap just came out and I was super excited about that. You um, in it? Yeah. Oh, cool. Congrats. Yeah. But um, yeah, he's a little punk and he's not in the game as much as some of the other characters, but Pokemon Snap was like, my favorite game as a kid so i'm yeah. super excited and it's a fun game i played a little bit of it it's great so i think everyone awesome. should play it wow. and obviously anything that these two lovely ladies talked about music wise that sounded interesting or fun to you please go research it uh the final fantasy soundtrack sounds amazing if you haven't spun that a million and a half times the avalanches uh i'm gonna go spin after this so super excited so thank you so much guys for taking the time uh of course we'll be talking soon uh, and for everybody else lots more interviews to come we got bands we got artists animators more voice actors it's going to be really fun so follow our social media and of course theirs uh and we'll talk super soon all righty bye